Hey guys, welcome to Keys Mods. This is David Fine, and I hold in my hand a kill jar. And when you're moth collecting or beetle collecting, uh, this is a must thing to have. You have to have kill jars, and you can actually misuse them and ruin a lot of specimens. And so, what we hope to do in this video is show you how to properly use kill jars and just some things to think about when you're using them. So, let's get to the video. All right, so let's get to something real quick before we get to how to use a kill jar. I want to say that here at Keys Moths, we are into the conservation of all Lepidoptera butterfly and moth species. And so uh, we only take just what we need for our scientific research, which typically isn't a whole lot. Uh, it is only taking what we need for scientific research and with the proper permits from the landowners. And so we also like to make sure that we euthanize our specimens as humanely as possible. Now, we, we say humanely, and we tend to humanize uh, animals a lot, but the truth is a butterfly and a moth and a beetle and other insects, they don't have the same neurological hookup that you and I do. Our brain translates pain in a way that's very complex. And so when I have a nerve and I touch a hot stove and I get burned, little nerves send a signal to my brain, my brain translates it as pain. But if I sever that nerve, then I don't feel the pain. And that can be dangerous for a person, but uh, guys, butterflies and moths don't have that setup. They don't have that neurological hookup. So maybe that puts your mind at ease a little bit. They're not suffering in the sense that you and I understand. All right, guys, let's go through some basics of what a kill jar is. It's real simple. It's just a jar, a glass jar, and there is a plaster bottom to that jar. This is about, let's say, a half an inch thick. And that plaster bottom is what you would put your killing agent into. And in this case, we use ethyl acetate. And so you can do the chem specs on that. It is toxic. You don't want to inhale it at close range, but it's, but it's an alcohol. And I would make sure kids check with your parents before you touch any chemical at all and uh, make sure you're doing this typically in a well-ventilated area because you don't want to breathe too much of it in. Uh, I always make sure that our kill jars are labeled with poison label and you can buy all your kill jars at BioQuit Products. And so uh, you guys can check that out. We have a link in our description for BioQuit Products out in California. Uh, we've been ordering from them oh, for 30 something years. And so uh, guys, when you're looking into your jar here, it's just plaster on the bottom. Uh, ethyl acetate, one of the things about it, it evaporates very, very, very quickly. So when you're using your kill jars, one of the things you wanna do is you wanna keep your lid closed at all times, unless you're putting a butterfly or moth insect specimen in and out of your jar. Reason being is because the more time your lid is open, the stuff will evaporate and the more you open your jar three, four, five times, your jar's ethyl acetate charge will, will lose little by little and pretty soon, your butterfly or your specimen, pretty soon your specimen's not dying. It doesn't die quick. Ethyl acetate, if, if a jar is well charged, ethyl acetate knocks out a specimen in like a second or two. It's very, very impressive and how quickly the ethyl puts them down. And so guys, what I wanna show you right quick is how do you charge a jar? And so what you do is I take my little ethyl, plastic ethyl container and what I'll do is I'll just squirt some in there until it's, there's some standing liquid, all right? And then what you do is you put your, your lid on. And then what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna let it sit for a while. And what you can see at the bottom of the jar, you'll see some bubbles coming up in the liquid. And what that does, guys, that's the, the, as the liquid, as the ethyl acetate permeates the pores of the plaster, air is coming up and it's escaping. And that's what you see, the little tiny bubbles that are making, you know, being made through the, in the liquid there. And then you can obviously see the edge of the jar. You can see the dark edge of the jar is where, the, where it's wet. And you want that whole plaster thing 
to be wet all the way down. Now, you can see that almost all of that fluid has absorbed. If you don't put enough ethylene and that plaster thing isn't completely saturated, then you're gonna have a real hard time killing your insect. And so you wanna make sure that you do a good job, kill it quickly. And the, actually there's almost, there's almost no standing ethyl acetate in this jar. In fact, I probably need to put a little bit more in there. And I wanna show you why. In fact, I wanna put a little too much in, okay? Because what I'd like to do is I'd like to show you some do's and don'ts. And so as this jar is almost completely fully charged, we just wanna make sure that plaster is completely saturated with ethyl acetate. Now, let's say it's fully charged and you've still got standing ethyl acetate in your jar. What I'll do is I'll take another jar like this. All right, sorry, it's kind of hard to film and take lids off of jars at the same time, All right? So I'll do this, and then what I'll do is I'll just pour the extra in there, and then close that. And then what you wanna do, guys, is it's you don't want your plaster, the surface of your plaster, to be wet. You don't want there to be moisture, because if you put a specimen in there and it's wet, the wings of the butterfly or the moth are gonna stick to the, pla to the wet plaster. So what I'll do is I'll open it, and I'll shake the jar just a little bit and air it out until you don't see any shiny fluid. Now, there's nothing, there's no standing ethyl acetate whatsoever. There's nothing shiny on the bottom. There's no standing fluid. It's completely in the gaseous state and the, the plaster holds enough of that gas inside of its pores to operate. You know, if I keep this lid closed tightly, then it should operate for quite a while. I've probably opened it a dozen times before I would need to, you know, recharge with my ethyl acetate. So as you can see in my little jar here, it doesn't take nearly as much. Sorry, my jar is a little dirty. It's got some scales in there. Uh, but the, the extra, I just, I just emptied in here and let this one charge. So I'll have several jars that are charged. If I'm out in the field, I'll always bring a dump jar this is a bigger jar. You know, there's not a whole lot of things that are that large that I would take. I'm usually catching micro moths and little tiny geometrics. But if I'm out in the field, I'll I'll put a little bit of ethyl in my dump jar. And if I catch a couple moths in these smaller jars, I'll transfer them into the dump jar. And then I'll let this accumulate some specimens while I reuse these because you don't want to go get a brand new moth and have it start flapping around in there and ruin your specimen that's, that's already dead in your jar. So when once a specimen dies, take care of your specimens. You either put it in an envelope. I always have my little killing jar caddy here. You know, I'll put them in an envelope like this and make sure that they're properly stored or put them in a dump jar and wait until later and do it then. So when I'm out in the field and I'm walking around, what I'll do is I'll usually carry a little caddy with me or I'll, I'll have a vest and I'll put a couple of these little smaller jars inside of a vest pocket. Uh, but what I'll do is I'll carry this caddy with me typically and this caddy will hold you know, all of my, my jars plus my ethyl and you know, I'll have my, like I said, my my uh, envelopes here, a pair of forceps, so I pick up the insects properly without destroying them. And I'll carry this around. This thing, I've had this thing for almost 20 years. Now, when I'm at a light sheet, and there's a lot of activity, I will typically have a whole series of small jars. And what I'll do is before I start turning the light on, or I'll put the light on, and as I'm waiting for moths to come, I'll take all these jars out and I will charge all of them. And I'll just sit there and make sure they're all fully charged. And then I'll put them back in my little thing here. And I use duct tape and just to make sure that they don't 
break on anything. It's just kind of like a padding or of sorts. I need a new one. It's kind of ugly, but sorry. Uh, but, and so what I got is I've got now, you know, almost a dozen jars that I can use and I'm not going to run out of jars. I'm not going to have to, oh, there's a, there's a really cool specimen. I have to recharge a jar because I forgot to have enough. So that's what I use when I'm at a light sheet. I'll have all that stuff. I'll have my, my dump jar. So if all these get full, I'll dump into here and then these are all empty again. All right, what I want to talk about real quick is when you're, when you catch a specimen in your net, how do you get the specimen into a jar? Well, the, the trick is you got to keep the jar open as little as possible, right? We already talked about that because your ethyl will evaporate and you don't want that to happen. So what I'll do is I'll take, I'll open my jar, I'll go inside, the net is pinched over and I'll go into my net bag and capture my specimen. And then what you can do is put your fingers over it like this. And, and then I'm using my other hand to record with my camera. But what you can do is use your other hand to slide the lid of the jar over it like this, or you can put both hands inside the net to ensure that the specimen doesn't escape. Finally, if a specimen is on, if the specimen is on a sheet like this, or it's on the side of a wall, and what you want to do is you come up to your, let's say, let's say this is a moth specimen right here. Moths almost always instinctively fly down. So what you want to do, beetles always, almost always drop down. So what you want to do is you want to come up from underneath it and come up like this because they're going to instinctively drop down before flying. So if you're underneath them like this and then you come up on top, if they drop, they're gonna drop into your jar and then you can close your jar. Okay, finally, if a specimen is on the ground, it's very, very tricky. You need two hands. So you kinda of wanna go up with one hand, with the lid on one side and your jar on the other, and you're gonna to wanna to try to kinda of do this. And, it, and it's not very easy, but it's, it's a tough thing. You're gonna lose a lot of specimens uh, before you start getting a hang of it. But that's a way that you can try. You gotta play around with that one, but uh, guys, hope you liked the video. It's a little goofy filming uh, with my hands while I'm trying to open jars and stuff. So I'm, I apologize if it's a little cumbersome, but uh, we have a great time and we hope to show you plenty more videos like this on how to curate an insect specimen for scientific research. So. Uh, guys, if you like the channel, you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And click the bell for notifications so that when we put out new videos, you don't miss out on the action. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let's get out there and enjoy South Florida. Take care.